Well, your eye on health is live tonight. We are taking a different look now at heart health and heart disease. There's some new research out there. Listen to this. It says plastic has been found inside some clogged arteries. It's a discussion that we are taking a little bit of a deep dive into tonight to learn a little bit more about it. So uh, joining us now here in studio is Dr. Carol Welloway. She is joining us from Baylor Scott & White. Uh, this is a discussion that is centered around nanoplastics specifically. So right off the bat here, uh, what are, are nanoplastics? Ex explain that to us. So they're tiny particles within plastic and they're tiny, tiny. So about 1,000 times smaller than a strand of hair. When you say tiny, tiny, I mean, obviously it's invisible, right? I mean, at least to, the, to most people's, the naked eye, right? Absolutely. And they're found where? Where do they come from? Uh, it comes from the way that plastic is made. So it, within plastic particles themselves. And so anything that has plastic in it um, could be subject to nano. So maybe like residue, like plastic residue maybe? Yeah, that... sometimes it seems that it can leach out when plastic is heated. Um, so being careful with what you're doing when you're heating plastic sure. and avoiding that can be helpful okay. to decrease that risk. So how harmful is this? Uh, let's get into that part. Uh, and exactly how much would you have to ingest before things start to go south? Yeah, great question. Don't have all the answers to that yet. Okay. Uh, but more and more research is showing that it's getting into the system. So we're seeing in people who've had heart attacks, that is a blockage in the heart vessels, that they're finding these nanoplastics there. Similarly, in people who've had strokes, um, people who have blockages in the neck that can sometimes cause strokes, they're finding them there as well. I just, everything has plastic or some sort of it. I mean, this must be really difficult to kind of get away from. I wonder, uh, doctor, what, what, what other kind of effects this could have on, uh, on other uh, parts of our health, and not specifically heart health. I mean, this has other effects too, right? Yes, yes. So stroke, as I've said, there's concern yeah. about outside of the heart. Um, and even looking at, can this pass to babies? So before a really? baby is born, um, Parkinson's disease, because it's so small, as we've said, it can get in and around tissues and into the bloodstream. Okay, so I guess the next natural question is reducing exposure. Is there something that we can actively do to, I guess, consciously minimize our exposure to, to, to these nanoplastics? Yes, so decreasing your use of plastic, which is really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was saying. I mean, it's everywhere. It's, it's yes. a very utilitarian material. So decreasing the use. That's, that's one. Trying to use more stainless steel and glass can be helpful. Okay. Um, also making sure that you're not heating the plastics, because again, these chemicals can leach when they're heated. And again, we're talking about, uh, are these, um, how about treatments? I mean, is this irreversible type damage that we're talking about? I mean, you talked about strokes and clogged arteries. I mean, that's pretty serious stuff. Um, but is this something that can be addressed earlier before we get to a stage like that? I think the research is still giving us a little bit more information and more studies are needed to see how much plastic do you need to come into contact with? How long is it staying uh, in the system? We're not clear on that, but it is showing up and it's showing up in these clots. Are they causing the clots? That's still yet to be determined. I wonder um, what kind of response the, I guess, plastics companies have had to, to, to some of these findings. Do, do we know yet? I mean, is there some sort of synergy in, in helping to reduce this on, on their part as well? So I have seen some research coming out of the chemical plants um, and companies that build, that create plastic yeah, right. um, and make plastic. And they are committed to decreasing the use of plastic. So they're saying reduce, reuse, recycle, recover. That is their push. Uh, because they understand that there, there's some concern here. Um, there are other companies that are saying it's not really any big deal. Yeah. Um, again, more research, I think, is going to help us decide exactly where we're going. And you talked about this showing up uh, in clogged arteries, uh, in, in cases of heart attacks and strokes. I I'm wondering, uh, would, would something like this show up in just regular blood work or a, a urinalysis or, or not really? No, we are not. Really? We are not seeing that. So it's truly these studies that are specifically looking for it. Started looking in mice. That's when they saw some of these transferring to the baby and mice developing what seemed okay. to be Parkinson's disease. So your average blood test, if you come see me, I'm not going to be For a physical, a routine it. physical, it's not like it's going to indicate that you have higher Correct. levels of not yet. plastics in your system. Okay, maybe one day. Uh, this is really fascinating. Um, I'm going to think about every plastic bottle I touch now. I, <laughs> I think know. you too, right? <laughs> yes. Everybody out there. Yes. But it's good information to share. Thank you very much, Dr. Welloway. We appreciate it. Uh, with Baylor Scott and White. And remember that you can find all of our discussions on CBSNewsTexas.com.